Good morning, welcome back to my second channel. Welcome back to Jack in the Books. Today I want to take you to what is essentially my happy place. It is one of my favorite bookstores in New York City. It is one of a kind. It is so fantastic and it is The Strand. The Strand brands itself as having 18 miles of books. So if you laid out all of the bookshelves, all of the books, it would be 18 miles long. That's insane. So are we seeing why this is the, my favorite place on earth? <laughs> Maybe. And I wanted to take you today and show you around. I am kind of in the mood to buy some new books because I ticked one thing off my to-do list today, therefore I deserve it. Therefore I deserve more books. I had such a fun day yesterday. I went to this show, it was a musical. It's Some Like It Hot. It was so brilliant. The dialogue was like the best I've ever seen on Broadway. And I actually got rush tickets, meaning I got the tickets on the day. So <laughs> you have to go to the theater at like midday. I woke up at 11.55. It was a Sunday. I'd been out the night before and also the clocks changed. So it was actually kind of like 10.55 really. At least that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> And so I woke up and I was like, oh my god, no! So I got all my clothes on, I literally ran there, I got the last two tickets. And they were only $40 to see a really great musical. This was such a romp, it was so fun. I highly recommend getting rush tickets to Broadway shows, it makes it so much cheaper. And if you're pretty flexible with what you see and when you see it, it's ideal. It's a pretty nice day today, it is forecast to rain in the next hour, so we'll see. I need to do a little bit of tidying because my desk space is... A mess. By the way, does anyone love Chinese checkers? Because this is my favorite game. I could honestly play this all day. This is like the one thing I'll be competitive about. Like anything that actually matters, I don't care. But Chinese checkers, I am in it to win it. When I woke up this morning, I finished this book. It's called The Novelist. And like, I am no longer going to be judging books by their covers because this is so beautiful and yet terrible, actually. <laughs> it's basically the morning routine of this guy who is trying to work on a novel, but he keeps getting distracted by things like Twitter and Gmail, and I don't know if I've ever said before that a book is full of shit, but <laughs> this book is quite literally set on the toilet for like quite a large proportion of the novel. Um, he's like sitting on the toilet having thoughts, and it's just very, very graphic. It talks about like toilet paper getting stuck in his butt hair. Like, I was sitting here like, what the hell am I reading? I know it's meant to be satirical. I think a few people in the publishing industry who write books will be like, oh my God, so relatable. He f finally someone said it. My question is, did anyone need to? What was it necessary to write that down and immortalize it? I don't know. I felt like it wanted to do something clever, but it just didn't for me. So I wasn't a massive fan of this book, unfortunately. I am a massive fan of that cover though. I think it's absolutely stunning, so. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some. I also got some book mail of some books that are nominated. Well, they're shortlisted for the Rathbones Folio Prize. So this, I think, is going to be my next read. It's a poetry collection, and I started to have a flick through, and I think it looks so experimental in the way um, that it explores form. And the one poem that I've read so far was absolutely stunning, so I think this is going to be... Yeah, next on my TBR. Maybe I'll even take it with me for my subway journey to the Strand. Now that's an idea. But I actually wanted to talk to you today about how to avoid an emergency. <laughs> this is a smooth segue. To tell you about Incogni, who have very kindly sponsored today's video. So unfortunately for me, some of my personal data was recently shared on the internet. And I've also heard of a lot of big companies having data breaches. And that's not ideal in terms of like our data that we have given them. And that's a problem. Apparently last year, there were 68% more data breaches than the year before. That's crazy. And data brokers can aggregate your personal information and then sell it to unknown businesses which use it for their own interests. In a nutshell, your personal information could be being sold online without you even knowing about it. But the good news is you have the right to request that data brokers delete your information and therefore protect your privacy. The bad news is this would take you a long time to do manually. However, there's a solution to that and that is Incogni. Incogni will reach out to data brokers on your behalf. They'll request that your personal data is removed and if there's any friction or backlash from those companies, they will deal with it for you. The whole process is completely automated so it's ideal and they will protect your data. All you have to do is create an account and tell them what personal information about yourself you would like to be removed. You grant them the right to work for you and then they will contact data brokers on your behalf to get your data removed from databases. Then you just kick back, relax, maybe sit on your sofa for a little bit and watch as they work and they'll keep you updated on the process every step of the way. And very generously, Incogni have given us a very special offer where the first 100 people to click the link down below and use the code JBOOKS will get 60% off Incogni. So don't delay, go protect your data, protect your inner peace and get it sorted now because your future self might thank you for it a lot. And now I'm off to the bookstore. Let's go. One, two, three, let's go.
the Strand. I did make some purchases. <laughs> this shop is just heaven on earth, really and truly. And I'm very, very excited about what I picked up. I honestly could spend all of my days in that bookstore, all day, every day, I would be very content. Um, to just like browse those bookshelves and walk around and speak to lovely bookish people and the lovely staff <laughs> And just talk about books. Um, they have a little coffee shop inside I actually genuinely feel that you could live in that bookstore quite happily um, And have a quite a nice existence. So anyway, <laughs> these are the books that I bought. The first two are books I've actually already read, but I don't own copies of them and as like a book collector I wanted them <laughs> Can I justify this? No, but the deed is done. Um, firstly, I read this book a couple years ago, but I borrowed it from the library. Um, and this is The Art of War by Sun Tzu, and it is this Chinese book, which was written during like the 6th century, I think? And it's sort of all about like military strategy. Now, hear me out. This book and the messages from this book have informed a lot of idioms and ideas and metaphors that are now used in popular vocabulary and everyday speech. And so I was really interested to read it. Did I think it was good? Mm. I, I mean, it's not as like relevant now as it was <laughs> back in the day. It is all about like outthinking your opposition, which isn't necessarily something that I have to do <laughs> very regularly. Like when I'm out on the streets of New York, I'm not necessarily employing these tactics, but it was just interesting for me to read. You know, I. Um, have studied uh, Chinese politics a lot as well at school, and so this was really informative for that. I don't know, I liked this copy of the book, and it was $8, and I thought, you're coming home with me. The next book, <laughs> you know, now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm like, this is really daft, but I didn't actually love this book, but I do like to have books that I've read in my collection, so that when I'm making content, I can like pick them up, talk about them, show them visually for you guys when you're watching my content, so this is I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. I love Casey McQuiston's other books. I really loved their book, um, One Last Stop. That book is so great and feel good. Red, White and Royal Blue also is just a really lovely, heartwarming story and I feel like this is kind of in that same universe of like easy reading, low stakes. Like this isn't going to stress you out. This is very much like a sit back and relax and enjoy the show. But for me, this one just didn't hit the mark in the same way that the other books did. And the reason I bought this is because it's signed. They had a signed edition and <laughs> I saw it on the table like this, right? And I said to myself, okay, if it's less than $20, I'll buy it because it's a signed copy of a book that I've read and an author that I really like, and it was $19.99. I'm not even kidding. Like, I swear, it says it in there. Oh, it says it on the back, $19.99. I swear to God, <laughs> it was one cent less than what I'd said. So, it went in the basket. Now for some books I'm excited to read. Which one first? Let's do like a random lucky day. Oh, this I've wanted for ages. Just by looking at him by Ryan O'Connell. A raucously funny, achingly real, and irresistibly touching debut novel about love, living with disabilities, and fighting addiction from the creator of Special and co-star of Queer as Folk. The reason I was so drawn to this book is that it's written about someone with cerebral palsy, and this is something that I don't really know anywhere near enough about, and I've never read a book about someone with cerebral palsy. And for me, it's really important to constantly be diversifying my reading, reading different voices, and reading about different experiences of the world. And so this, I think, will be vital reading. And it's also blurbed by Melissa Broder, who wrote Milk Fed, which I loved, one of my favorite books of last year. And you know what, if she likes it, I feel like I will too. A very funny novel about falling for a fantasy and finding love for one's own self. Say no more, Melissa. Uh, there's a reason that this is currently in my apartment and not in the store, and that's because it sounds so good. Next up, we have Nevada. This is a book I had my eye on for a while as well, and this is actually like a re release of this book. So I think this book originally came out in like 2013, and then they re released it recently. Yeah, I was right. So 2013, and then it was re released in 2022. Oh my gosh, I've just noticed that the dedication at the front is like for Pam even though it's not a happy book. Say no more. I love a sad book. This is about Maria, who is almost 30 and works in a second-hand bookstore in New York City. 
That's my dream setting. That literally the dream setting. What I gather from this is that it's essentially the trans version of On the Road by Jack Kerouac. It's like a road trip novel across America, but with a trans main character, which I think is going to be really, really interesting. Um, I recently read Detransition Baby, loved it. I thought the level of nuance was absolutely fascinating. And it's described as a really loved cult novel of our time and a landmark of trans literature. So I think this is, again, essential reading. Next, I have a book that I want to take with me on my trip to Korea at the end of this month, and that is Almond. And this is actually highly recommended by both RM and Sugar from BTS. And I made a video on RM's book recommendations, like two, maybe even three years ago now. And I was wondering if I should make a video on Sugar's recommendations as well. I know that um, Carrie, um, her YouTube channel is Carrie Can Read, has done this video. So I might reach out to her first and see what she thinks. But um, her video is really, really wonderful. And I remember her talking about this book in that video. Um, and I kind of want to read these books myself and, and see what I think of them. So um, let me read you the description. Yun Jae was born with a brain condition called alexithemia that makes it hard for him to feel emotions like fear or anger. He does not have friends, but his devoted mother and grandmother provide him with a safe and contented life. But everything changes when a shocking act of random violence shatters his world, leaving him alone and on his own. So doesn't that sound amazing? And this cover is kind of iconic too. And also that spine. Great. They're going to look great on my bookshelf. <laughs> and now the final book that I bought is this one, Stories from the Tenants Downstairs. Normally it's very rare that I buy a book that is hardback and yet here we have three of them. So, um, you know I have to be excited about a book to buy it in hardback. The voices of the residents of Banneker Terrace linger and echo long after the last page, a tremendous debut. So this is Lots of different stories, I think eight different stories that are all interconnected and one thing that binds all of these characters is the fact they all live in the same building. I'm pretty sure it's set in Harlem and um, like I've said many times before on this channel, while I'm in New York, I'm loving reading New York narratives, um, hearing about different places. I've actually been running in Harlem quite recently, so um, I think it'd be really interesting to read about read a story set in Harlem, you know? And I'm very intrigued by this because the novel that I'm working on um, has some similar themes. And so when I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, how interesting. I'd love to see how another debut novelist um, tackles these ideas. So yeah, we have eight short stories. And it's really interesting. So the contents page has like a name for each story and then the narrator and the flat they live in. So you've got like 14D, 6B, 3A, 12H, 24M. Oh, interesting, two of them live at 6B. I think we're in for a ride. And so that is my book haul from The Strand. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks for coming along with me for the day. Massive shout out to Incogni for sponsoring this video. Make sure you head to the link down below to check it out. While you're down there, you might as well press subscribe and give this video a like and I'll catch you very, very soon. Bye-bye.